Hello class. Uh, in this video I just want to talk a little bit about setting up a perspective inside Revit. So I pulled up their sample model here to go over basically setting up a camera and other such things. Um, and of course there's, there's many different ways of doing this but I think a sort of easy straightforward way um, is to do these steps that I'm going to do. And uh, one of the things that I find is I think setting up a perspective view in Revit, it, it requires setting up a camera under 3D views and uh, because you have to get the camera height right uh, I find it's often easy to go to a floor plan view and um, and set it up that way. So I'm actually going to go to I'm going to actually take a view that's slightly different because of the way this is. I'm going to go from a view from say this rooftop of this piece of the house looking out at, at that part of the house over in this direction uh, because it's it'll be the same thing as often like maybe the simpler projects you might be working on is like from the ground level up towards the house is going to deal with the fact that the first floor set up a couple feet and, and all these things be very similar um, to what you'll you'll be facing in your assignment so I'm going to go to level two in my case so I can get to the roof of that that segment in, in your case you very might well do it from level one um, but the same same approach is going to work so we we'll do that and then I'm gonna go over to view up here and I'm gonna to go to my 3d views and click on the the bottom section here so I can get to my camera view so I'm gonna to go to my camera view and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click where I want to be standing you know or approximately where I'm gonna be standing so in my case it's gonna be in the roof and yours it might be the ground somewhere I'm gonna click and then I'm gonna pull out we see these blue sort of bars there's sort of the the view triangle or the view shed that you'll be looking at so if I want to see the edge of the house I'd, I'd pull it out this way if I want to see the other side of the house I could pull it in the opposite direction in this case I want to sort of view that way and we get sort of a perspective and this perspective uh, you know it it looks good uh, uh, you know I could go with this but they're really if you're paying attention there's some things you really need to change and uh, I'm going to show you this so when you edit cameras in uh, Revit oftentimes what you do is you can come over here and edit sec settings and I you know I like to focus on eye level perspectives and so if we look at this eye level perspective it's saying it's 15.4 as an eye level and then by default because the way I did it the target elevation is also 15.4 meaning it's just straight across the thing is oftentimes when you're setting up perspectives like this the perspective the level is not actually where you're standing and you need to adjust that over here and to figure that out a lot of times I'll go to my elevation so if I were to say go to my south elevation we can see what I did is I, I was at level 2 which is 910 but the the height of this roof is actually below that right so you can see between that dotted set of dotted lines and, and, and that line right there is a difference between where I should be standing and where I actually set up the camera so in Revit when I go to a level it's automatically set the camera height to 5 foot 6 which is eye level but above the level I'm at. But in this case, it's too tall. And this is, I find, is often the case, even if you're doing it on the ground, because if you're setting it up from level one, you're, you're five, six above level one. The thing is, the ground should always be below level one, usually, by some number of feet. And so if you know the feet, you go ahead, you can just go ahead and subtract the eye elevation from that foot mark. If you don't know, which in this case, I could go and look, but if I don't know, I would just go to the measure tool, and I'll just measure the two differences and, and it looks like it's about uh, you know people aren't exactly five six so if it's saying eleven inches um, I'll just call it a foot and be you know good enough about that and so now you'll notice my camera disappeared when I did that because I'm, I'm in the elevation view and the, and I'll have to get my camera back to do this and, and it, this is not hard but it often is, is a bit tricky if you don't know what you're doing for the first time so I'm going to go back to that view which is 3D 3D1 view and I can get it here um, and so if I'm going to say I'm going to lower a foot it just means I'm going to take this number and go to 14 foot and I'll just probably be almost imperceptible uh, that little jump right there but it just made it slightly different the reality is if your level one is has a porch maybe you're up three or four feet that would be a much more significant uh, setup in, in height difference um, that you'll want to account for of course if the ground is sloping you might even have to account for that perhaps doing it from the site plan um, so anyway, we, we set up the height elevation. Now there might be other things you want to do 
as well to sort of get the perspective set. One of the things you can do is if I click on this view square, this is how I get this to be showing back in plan and elevation. So if I want to adjust anything in plan or elevation, I first have to go to the view, select this square and then if I went to like level two I can see the camera and I can move it around let's say if I wanted to pull back further that's all I, I would have to do to sort of pull it back further or pull it forward or whichever direction you want to go I could also do the same in elevation so we can see I have it here it's pretty much set at at height uh, arguably I could even lower it a little bit but um, I'm pretty good so I could do that again if I click off I lose it the way you you go back is going to 3D view and selecting that line and then it comes back. As long as I have this line selected it'll come in other drawings. The other thing I can do with this box is I can change the crop pretty easily just by clicking those uh, little blue dots here and not that I needed to for this image but if you want to widen it which is typically the case you can just pull it across like that. Now, in this case, looking straight across works pretty well, but if I had a taller building, even a taller house with a second story on top, I might be cutting off the upper limits of that house. And you can make those changes too, and I find an easy way to do that is with uh, the navigation wheel over here. If your navigation wheel over here is not showing, I just want to show you how to do that really quick. Um, and so I'm going to go to View, and I'm going to go to User Interface and uh, navigation bar is uh, this little thing here. So go ahead and turn that on if yours isn't on. Because then I can click on this and it, and it pulls up uh, this little guy here, which I think is helpful for setting up a perspective because uh, one is look. So look is nice because look does not change the height of my eye level. It only changes the height of the target. And if you look closely, you can see that that number changed. Uh, but this number, my height did not change my eye level did not change. So so if you use pan or orbit or these other things, it's going to change also the eye level and no longer make it make it a perfect eye level anymore. But look look sort of adjust makes that adjustment for you. And then if you want to sort of you could change your position in the first floor plan or the second floor plan as I showed a couple minutes ago. Or you can use the walk button which is nice so I can sort of pull up with my wheel as I'm click I'm still holding down on the mouse button or pull back and sort of make minor adjustments in that way as well. And so you know use this tool to, to, uh, to get uh, the position just where you want to go. And between all those tricks you can get uh, a good camera position and spend time thinking about it uh, because naturally Revit might not right off the bat make such a great position but spend the time using those tools and you'll have a good camera position.